kind of just a little introduction. Who are you? What do you do? What was your time, your time at CC? What did you study? Yeah, so Wi-Fi is breaking up a little bit, so I hope you can hear me. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm Teddy Benson. I uh, graduated from Colorado College in 2013. Uh, let's see, I studied studio art and concentrated in printmaking. So I studied uh, in the print studio, but also doing lots of other uh, art, you know, obviously throughout the major process. But yeah, um, and then uh, since then, I have kind of come, you know, to the point of going to grad school for art and uh, moving out to Steamboat Springs to uh, work as a manager at Omi Graph Print Shop. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you cut out a little bit, but I think I can still hear you. Okay, cool. <laughs> okay, awesome. So um, kind of just moving into some questions. Um, so, you know, we're talking about kind of like alumni, but also just, you know, kind of what it was like when you were a student there. Um, so when you were first starting out at CC, what did you think that you would study? Um, did you always know you wanted to study studio art and be a printmaker? Or did that like change over time? Um, and then why did you ultimately decide to study um, printmaking? Uh, great question. So um, let's start with just going to CC in the first place. I hadn't really studied too much art uh, before then. And I actually went to CC with the hopes of graduating as an environmental science major. I was passionate about studying that and pursuing a job. Uh, and that after school, and, but, uh, you know, I was an environmental major through the first semester of sophomore year, and I changed to an art major after I had uh, signed up to take, uh, I think, intro to drawing with Bogdan Swider. So I, you know, obviously with the block plan, you're completely immersed in the class. And I had taken a few environmental classes, really enjoyed them and saw a lot of value in that. Uh, but I had also uh, found this feeling and this uh, passion for what had transpired throughout Bogdan's class. I, I really found a voice as far as, uh, or at least just the confidence to, to know that I was capable of doing something that I hadn't expected or anticipated and I loved it I, I loved showing up every day to you know draw from real life or to draw you know from my imagination you know for assignments uh, uh, but uh, at the end of the day I was I felt genuinely happy uh, where I was in that class and I, I saw a lot of potential for myself in the future to to feel that way and to um, learn a lot about myself as well as the practice of, of art in general. Um, so that really just turned me on uh, to, to being an art major and I, I pretty much flipped a switch I think at the end of the block and I was like this is for me and uh, you know I took uh, several classes in the art department you know after that between sculpture and printmaking and I think that the what occurred in the print studio for me was I, I'm a technical kind of minded person and I, I love process and I love using my hands and, and finding certain techniques and, and even just like your physical motions are so important in, in printmaking and it's, it's, you can relate that to even just like skateboarding or something like that where you know there's a lot of sleight of hand and, and really just honed in skills that you have to develop over time. Uh, and I really related to that. And also just the community aspect of being in the print shop. Uh, I felt like it was easy to share ideas about not only the process, but about how uh, you wanna develop imagery and develop art um, or a concept even. But uh, yeah, that's, that's basically the story of how I fell in love with the print shop uh, through just becoming an art major and exploring you know, certain classes that I, I didn't really know too much about in the first place or that I wanted to learn more about. Um, and I, I'd recommend that to you know, any art major is to really 
go out of your range of comfort comfortability or whatever you might expect of yourself as an artist because you're going to learn more about yourself in you know other contexts um, yeah so is it, uh, does that kind of cover the question for you no yeah that was that was great and i think i mean i also i'm thinking about maybe doing a thesis um with printmaking as well and i think that that's a pretty I've heard from a lot of CC students that kind of like evolution from a lot of people will come in wanting to be like an environmental science major. And I think that's a wonderful thing that you take all these skills that you have, like you said, kind of with skateboarding and so many other things and can translate. Yeah, I'm that sorry, I can't, <laughs> I can't hear you. <laughs> okay, can you hear me now? So um, kind of just like moving on, um, if you can hear me, thumbs up, but I'll type the question as well. So outside of like just, you know, in the print studio and other things, you kind of got into that space and really, I guess, found yourself in there. Um, what were some of like the other classes that really impacted you, whether they were like in, you know, art studio or something totally outside of that? And yeah, how did that kind of form your CC experience? Yeah, I, uh, I think that uh, first of all, um, I found that painting, class with Bogdan was a, a pretty cool, just like a tangent maybe, or just like an exploratory um, mode that I got into that was really outside of what I was um, focusing on at the time. It gave me a lot of like time to explore a medium and, that, and then how to use that in certain ways that I was um, not necessarily expecting, but found successful. Um, but then uh, obviously advanced drawing in Spain that was huge. Um, I ended up living in Spain uh, for a year last year, uh, greatly because of um, how much I fell in love with the city and being able to use the city uh, as a way to navigate as an artist. Um, so um, yeah, the, and, and it also really got me into urban landscape drawing and stuff, which uh, you know, I've, that's definitely had an impact on what I do as an artist now or part of what I do. Um, and then uh, one more class was uh, critical whiteness studies. I think it was a huge um, uh, class for me to take. And I, I, everyone I took th that class with, uh, I think felt the same way. And we talked a lot about, um, it's, it, it was in the race and ethnic studies uh, department at the time. And um, I, we had so many wonderful conversations. And as far as just being, uh, class that I took outside of the art department that was really valuable and obviously it's um, very relevant to what's what has been going on and you know what is going on right now uh, so I, I think about that class a lot um, and then what was the other part of your question um, so you kind of answered it but I kind of went on a tangent and just was asking how um, like kind of all of those things connected and why you think it's important to kind of step out of like your comfort zone or take classes that like aren't on a certain like path to one major. Yeah, I think that you kind of answered the question yourself in that like, um, or just proposing the idea that many different classes or um, fields of academia or just fields of life can come together and, you know, make you know, who you are as an artist, um, that's your voice, you know, and like your experiences. So I think that it's important to follow your curiosity, but also to follow um, chaos as well, like follow, you know, just an, an instinct or something like that. If, if something's telling you to take a class outside of the department that you may not find, like it may not just be the class for you, but it's just something that, you know, you've thought about. I mean, it's it's something where, yeah, you're in college for four years and you're trying to pack a lot of things into, you know, one, uh, one area of time. But, uh, I mean, you also, with, like, regrets or something like that, like, I regret that I took, didn't take a philosophy class at CC, but that just um, maybe plants the seed that, you know, you've got to pick up a book about philosophy after you graduate, you can still learn, you know, and it's important to always follow that kind of instinct. 
I think, um, especially as an artist and someone who is able to vocalize, um, you know, a, a worldly view. Um, that's, that's a good thing. Yeah, and also important to remember that, you know, college is such an important part of your life, but also it continues on and like that, yeah, learning shouldn't stagnate. So I think that's awesome. Um, I'll send the next question, but I'll also kind of like ask it in my own words. But I guess you've kind of talked about a few of these stepping stones, but kind of more leading into like your final thesis and the work that you did in college with printmaking. What were like a lot of the steps that like kind of like led to that and inspired that final th thesis? Um, if you want to talk a little bit about that, as well as like how does that influence your work today? Yeah, I think for for me it's um, subjective and um, very much related to pursuing uh, concentration in printmaking. Um, I had been taking several printmaking classes uh, throughout the years uh, with Gene Gumper and Kate Leonard, and I was working with Heather um, on projects and, and learning a ton. And I think that once I came to the point of uh, pursuing independent studies in the print shop, that's where I was able to kind of breathe a little bit and um, and to be given the the space to really pursue and explore my own um, creations. And, and it was during that time where I just kind of developed this process that uh, worked out to be really successful as far as just making monotypes um, that uh, resembled abstract portraiture. And I made a lot of uh, work during that time. I think I took two or three independent studies uh, during my senior year. And um, that, was, that was a time where I was uh, given the responsibility to, to learn for myself, you know, given the tools that I had received. And obviously the feedback of, uh, you know, my advisors and all the people that I was working with and my peers too, um, to see that work received by them uh, and then to see how that related to work that people were making at the studio at the same time, uh, it actually just, you know, gave me the confidence that I could um, make, uh, you know, a show out of the work and I could keep making work that was, uh, you know, to be received by other artists and, you know who else I was going to be showing with or showing for or showing around or whatever um, and yeah that's a huge part of, of the major is having that you know thesis show and that that idea is so important because as an artist you can pursue shows and you know that's one of the things about being a professional artist is exhibiting your work or having your work known or perceived or seen by people um, and I always continue to tell people like um, even my friends who are outsider artists or who haven't pursued an art major at all I tell them you're making work you're making artwork I know you're capable of making work so uh, why not like have some directive and actually book a show talk to people about having a show that's so important after you graduate is to continue with that momentum of you know your thesis show you're working so seriously for such a long time to not only have a degree but to know what it's like to exhibit artwork um, in a gallery setting or in a museum setting or something like that and with the do you ever should have the opportunity and the, the mindset to keep that momentum going and I, I think that, you know, some of my friends are doing other things or don't have the time or don't have the interest in doing that. And that's fine. But I think that it's such a special thing to, to pursue a career as an artist, not because it's unconventional, but because uh, of, of all of the other good things that, you know, come from it. Um, so yeah, that's kind of a, a little bit of a tangent to, to the question about, you know, how the thesis goes. But I think that the thesis is just so important as, as a tool to keep with you, you know, forever. Yeah, I just, no, that's so cool. I, I'm so glad you're going on tangents, but yeah, I guess I kind of want to know more. So I'm going to be a senior next year um, and we'll have to do a thesis. And 
there's a lot of excitement with that, I yeah, think, I but also like a lot of kind of like, I guess, fear about like how that will manifest. Um, and how did you kind of like work through that process um, just like naturally, but also like, yeah, how did you get from like point A of like, this is my original thought of my thesis to like the completed version? What did that process look like for you? Yeah, I, it was scary. You're, it is scary for everybody. <laughs> I think if you're not scared, um, I don't know. <laughs> uh, but uh, I think that um, as far as dealing with that and finding um, maybe not just like a breaking point or something like that, but finding success in that process is really just to keep your head down and keep working and use that energy of being scared or being um, unsure or being um, negative and try and turn that into um, positivity, turn that into hard work, you know, like if there's no use in worrying when you can just be working, you know, and I think that some people who may not find success in their thesis or in that process, um, that, that even if you don't find that and you just work your butt off, it's, that shows and like that actually is sometimes better than having an easy show that's just really successful in general, which is, you know, awesome. And you see all sorts of thesis shows and it's hard because you're in a community and sometimes it feels competitive or sometimes it feels like you may not be who you think, you know, like who you think you want to be or something like that. But um, it's, it's just really important to just be in the studio, be present and be thinking about art and not be thinking about how stressed out you are. And, and it's, it's I've, I still deal with that kind of pressure too. I mean, having a solo show or something like that or a job interview, you know, it's, it's um, you know, you're gonna deal with a lot of adversity as an artist, you know, and a lot of weird, mysterious stuff that you may not have expected. That also goes for all the good things you'll see. But, um, you know, it's, it's about being able to, to navigate around that as a person and maintain your relationships and to once again, just keep your head down and keep working. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah, I, that's, uh, that's really good for me to hear. And I think for a lot of other people as well. Um, Cause yeah, there's a lot of anxiety around it, but the process, you know, from what I've seen is so rewarding. Um, mm -hmm. But kind of like moving forward, I guess, to like another step that a lot of people are gonna face this year is like, I'll send the question to, but how did you kind of like feel directly after graduating? Um, like what was that process as well as like going into that year? And what did you think you were going to do? Um, so I felt great after graduating. I felt accomplished. And I also felt um, like I didn't know what would happen or over the next five years or something like that. I knew, uh, I felt like I wanted to pursue art as something that would be not only in my life, but <clears throat> kind of a center of gravity in my life. And that itself was really scary because, you know, the unemployment rate was already pretty high when I graduated. And, you know, even now it's, it's not easy to get a, a paying job in the arts. And I, that's what I kind of thought about, you know, what, what am I going to do for money? What am I going to do to be an artist? And how am I going to um, work with all of that? And I thought to myself, and I, you know, I spoke to a lot of people about it, and um, the route that I ended up finding was that, you know, pursuing studying was something that, that may yield to more connections and more experience and more credibility. Uh, and so right after, you know, graduating, I, I was able to uh, work with the CC art department as a junior printmaker. So I assisted with a lot of the print classes and uh, with some private projects um, and uh, was able to, you know, wiggle my way in a little bit and, um, you know, uh, to 
at least just be present in working in the arts. And sometimes, you know, you're not getting paid or you're not getting paid a lot. And I sought out internships and all that, you know, stuff because, you know, you can go on to teach, you can go on to be a professional artist, you can do all sorts of things. Um, but I, I just looked, you know, at what was right in front of me and by word of mouth, I was, you know, told about several internship programs, one in Connecticut at the Center for Contemporary Printmaking, another uh, at OMI Graphics where I work now. Uh, and so I, I wanted to just do anything I could to be in a space uh, with art. And, you know, I, I think that um, not being sure of, of how that would be like overall a success was, was difficult. Um, and it's still, you know, it's still scary. I, I mean, who knows what, where I'm going to be in the next five years or 10 years, but I know for a fact that it's going to be in some sort of creative mode. You know, I'll, I'll be there, you know, because I have that power as, as a person, um, you know, if, if you're really truly inspired and can navigate and be, uh, be present in certain networks and really just be talking to people and knowing people and meeting new people. Uh, it's, it's really something beautiful in like the art world where generally speaking, people are going to try to help you as much as they can. They really will. Um, you know, anybody, I work at Omi Graphics and Steamboat, uh, a wonderful print studio. And I recommend to people all the time, hey, send us an email. We want to talk to you about, you know, maybe starting as an intern or starting, you know, uh, doing administrative work for us or something like that. You know, even people who are interested in the arts who may not have had those opportunities in the past. It's really important to uh, trust in people and their ability to learn and their ability to, you know, adapt and to become something that they may not have thought they could be, you know. Um, it's it's uh, scary, you know, but it's, we also like, uh, I've met a lot of people who are really, really, really good people who will do anything for you, you know, and that's something beautiful that you sometimes don't find in other worlds. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's really cool. I, that kind of like answers a little bit of the next question I have, which was just like some of the like people and I guess like jobs that kind of were along the way that were really, I guess like influential or like really made a mark on what you, you know, where you kind of are now. Definitely. Uh, so, uh, like I said, I, I pursued a few internships after graduating, and uh, those were incredibly rewarding. I worked with master printers, uh, worked with artists for, of all likes, and, and that just, um, you know, that really uh, helps as far as just not my confidence, but also like a career path just establishes itself you know after a while of just being present in that space however you can be there um uh and then uh let's see other jobs that i kind of found uh rewarding uh, or internships i guess um i recently lived in spain um, i taught english at a public school where i did for a variety of different classes um, including art actually and I have some Spanish speaking background, uh, but by no means uh, was I, you know, as fluent as the kids that I was teaching. Um, but I, I really, that allowed me to step outside my comfort zone <coughs> while still being in uh, an area that I love, which is teaching and being in an environment that's, you know, a community and sharing ideas with people. Um, so that, that was like really, really rewarding. And it, it was a risk too. I, I felt like spent committing a year to live in Spain uh, to teach English was a step away from the career path that I wanted to pursue. Um, but I really decided to use that time to also uh, build uh, experience as an artist and to paint a lot and to use the resources I could 
in Spain and I ended up having a solo show uh, while I was living out there and ended up meeting with uh, Bogdan's advanced drawing class, uh, which was really special to kind of uh, reflect on my experience, you know, when I was there with Bogdan and then to see all the students working incredibly hard and uh, it was it was wonderful. But I, I think that that just kind of goes back to stepping outside of your comfort zone a little bit or taking a class that may not, you know, seem like it's the right thing to do. It really could change your experience or your mind about things um, in, in positive ways. Yeah, that's, no, that's so cool. And like, awesome that you've, you know, really focused in on stuff, but also been able to like, again, step outside of that, which seems like something that CC teaches you and also the people who go there are attracted to that kind of lifestyle. So, um, uh, so I kind of wanted to get into how you got connected with Omi Graphics and kind of your position there, just in general, like, you know, what life is like working there and yeah, just kind of a taste for that. Definitely. So I, uh, let's see, it was 2014. Uh, I had moved back to the East Coast um, from CC um, after working there as a, you know, in the department a little bit as a junior printmaker. And so I uh, finished up uh, interning in Connecticut after around you know six months or so and figured that I wanted to work at another print studio um, and at the time uh, there had been several CC kids who had interned at Omi Graphics. Um, we have a great relationship with CC and my boss Sue Omi she uh, really loves uh, the work ethic of CC kids as well as um, you know um, the proximity to C mode isn't too bad. You know, it's pretty easy to come up for a month or something. Um, so I, I felt like that was really worthwhile to work at Omi Graphics. At the time, uh, my uh, good friend Hollis Moore um, and Malcolm Perkins Smith, they were working at Omi Graphics. Um, and I decided, yeah, like I'll, I'll pursue an internship there. And so it was only supposed to be a month long internship, uh, a few interns canceled after me so I ended up being there for three months and then uh, really felt at home uh, at that print shop and working with Sue Omi she's a wonderful boss and working with Hollis and Malcolm uh, and then um, during that time I was uh, promoted to an apprentice I'd worked there for a, you know a while and, um, and then Hollis was leaving for grad school so uh, she, uh, I basically assumed her position as the manager for a month um, before I also was leaving for grad school. So it was kind of like a really nice like incline into having a ton of experience working with artists in a collaborative print studio and also just learning how to uh, also work administratively in the arts or, you know, to sell art or to work, um, you know, on exhibiting art or to go to New York for print fairs and do all of that, you know. So it was like a, a whirlwind of experience that I really felt so connected to. Um, and, uh, you know, I felt really, you know, like it was time to keep on pushing what I could do in the arts. So I decided to apply, you know, while I was working at Omni Graphics, I applied to grad school um, to several different schools and I got accepted to to go to University of Wisconsin-Madison to get a Master of Fine Arts in printmaking. And so I felt like that really helped to develop my experience and uh, to um, essentially like uh, set my mind up to work and to continue working in the arts. And it's always kind of been like that since then, you know, you get one taste of, of how amazing it is to to be a part of like a contributing member of society in the arts you know and, and to be authenticated like that working at Omi Graphics is is wonderful and I'd recommend that to anybody um, who's in the art department you know a studio art major 
um, to at least just look us up and check out the internships because that's a really, really great launching point for students um, and for people who may not even be too interested in printmaking or to, um, to want to know more about it. Um, I think that, you know, showing somebody who doesn't even know a thing about printmaking or printmaking studio, they just are overwhelmed and want to know more and more and more. And I'm learning new things every day. And I've, I've worked for Omi Graphics for uh, two years in total. And, you know, I'm still like in awe about how complex uh, something like, you know, working in a professional printmaking studio can be um, and how to manage all of that. Um, so I think that that's just like f fuel for me to keep going. And I hope that like students are able to conceptualize that you can be successful in the arts if you're really, really involved and can really just, uh, you know, prove to yourself and prove to other people that you really want to be there. Um, that's like kind of the bottom line for me, at least. <laughs> um, yeah, and kind of like moving, I guess you, you've talked a lot about like this big journey, I think for you like personally, but I also feel like that manifests in art a lot too as well. Um, and you know you've had like all these different like phases i guess of like your printmaking and like how you interact with art how do you feel like that has like manifested between like the work that you made at cc and then the work that you made make now and the work that you help make right I, that's a great way to pose the question because um i mean for some people their uh output or their experience or their involvement in the arts is really um like, uh, I don't want to say predictable, but to, to be consistent. Um, and that's, that's something that I really admire. And I feel that I have a mode of working creatively, or even through job experience that I tend to reflect on what's happening to me, you know, um, in certain moments. And so my work, you know, varies so much between, um, you know, what I did in my thesis as far as doing kind of abstract portraiture work in mono prints in the print studio to uh, working um, doing urban landscape drawing or to work you know on paintings that are um, you know of, of trees or plants or something like that or to make a woodcut portrait of somebody that that is completely representative um, of you know uh, the figure, but I, I, or to like be screen printing or to be doing all sorts of things. I've, I've picked up so many tools that I, I feel like it's, um, not my obligation necessarily to stay in one mode all the time. And that's a beautiful thing maybe for some people to, to think about, um, is that if you're getting down or if you feel like you're jumping around too much, it's, it's okay in certain contexts to embrace that, um, whether it's in the long run or, you know, uh, for like a, a solo to have work that may not necessarily, you know, be cohesive in one take, but rather, you know, it, it tells a greater story. Um, so I, I think that, you know, for, for my experience, it's, I've gained a lot of, um, uh, really, really good experiences from from working in a lot of different modes and working with other artists too. Like working at Omi Graphics, it's um, I, I'm around art all the day and I'm around different artists. And Omi Graphics has been open for ten years, and we have worked with sixty different artists, um, just around sixty over the last ten years. So we're seeing like in a, in one day, you know, a plethora of art. And that really has kind of affected my uh, disposition as far as like what I may perceive myself as an artist. Um, I think that it's really important for me to explore certain things that I, I feel um, of value to me. And yeah, if, when you're in, a, in your senior thesis, and you're working really, really hard in a really concentrated mode, maybe that's not the best thing to think about at the time. But it may be a good thing to think about if you're nervous about, you know, what job you may want to get in the future or something like that. Like, 
there's a lot of beautiful surprises that can happen from you know working in certain modes that may not be incredibly consistent or something like that but rather you know you're allowing yourself to open up to your own experiences no that's yeah that's awesome thank you um i guess you've can you hear me okay yeah i can hear you um i can you hear me hello okay can you hear me yeah um so i guess to kind of finish it off um i just kind of want to know a little bit more about like um can you hear me um i can't really hear you too well. not too well Okay. It's okay. Um, I can read your question though, uh, for the goals for the future. Um, I think that, uh, yeah, where does goals for the future go? Okay. So I'm going to talk about the goals for the future. And also, thank you so much for bearing with me. I hope that it, the Wi-Fi isn't too spotty or anything. But um, uh, I think that I really plan on pursuing work at OMI Graphics uh, for as long as I, I feel is fit. Uh, but I, I think that, um, like I said, it's, it's important for me to uh, work in a lot of different ways and I, you know I work at a skateboard shop in Steamboat right now and I feel like that's a great opportunity for me to be in a different space where I, I'm picking up on new things uh, that I, I'm going to take with me you know in the future whether it's creatively or something else but um, you know I, I really do uh, love being in a, a space um, uh, of learning and teaching. And I'd, I would love to, uh, in the future, work uh, to teach in the arts, definitely uh, in a print space or something like that. Um, uh, you know, whether it's at a community college or, you know, wherever I can, uh, you know, make that happen. Um, but I think that, you know, beyond that, I, I'm going to continue working as an artist and building up my own voice as an artist and booking shows and uh, working on, you know, getting other people involved as well. I, I think that um, one of my goals is to uh, really start a few strong group shows locally and maybe um, in other places to get, get people involved uh, that may not have that uh, opportunity, but also to be able to organize um, ideas around, uh, you know, a community or collaboration. Um, that's something that I feel um, that I don't take advantage of enough. You know, I, I think that it's important for people to really seek out opportunities for themselves, but, you know, especially as of late, I've been looking around and trying to, uh, trying to keep everybody um, that I can think of as close to me as I can. Um, so, uh, you know, like that's kind of a range of goals for the future. <laughs> um, you know, I, I think that uh, I'd also in the future love to move back to Spain and, you know, work in a, uh, a space like that where I can learn about people that have different experiences and uh, to really learn a lot more about myself. I, I you know, um, and to live in a lot of different, you know, different places. And, you know, I think it's, good to really establish yourself but um life is short so definitely follow follow your dreams as much as you can <laughs> um i don't know if can you hear me yeah it's, it's a little crackly but i can hear you okay i guess kind of finally i just want to know if you have any like words of advice for young graduates or just anything else you want to mention um sure uh, yeah, um, let's see. For graduates, I think that it's important to know that you've come this far and that you have a lot of 
uh, a lot of experience from just being so involved in, in creating art for, you know, however, however long you have been. Um, and to, you know, make sure that you realize that it's difficult to, you know, conceive that you're going to have wonderful success in the arts, but rather to think more about what you can do in the moment as far as that email that you can send or, you know, that person that you can message or that person you can call and say, hey, what do you know about opportunities for somebody like me? And I think that a lot of people close themselves off too much in that regard. Um, and it's, it's easy to do that, but it's also really easy just to grab your phone and, you know, talk to somebody. And that's, that's something that I've learned, you know, over time and that I've found success in doing. Um, and it's also really just important to, to continue drawing, to continue painting, to continue, you know, doing something else, even if you have to, you know, make money in, a, in another way. Um, it's, it's so important just to be involved in uh, what I would assume everybody is very, very passionate about if you're an art major. Um, it's, it's so easy, you know, just to like as well pick up your sketchbook and just sketch. Like, you know, I, I feel like sometimes I don't do that enough and I do it, you know, almost every day. But I've come to the point where it's something that you really can allow yourself to be absorbed in and find really wonderful things and opportunities and friendships and connections and uh, ways to impact others in positive ways. So I think that that's kind of like a maybe a good conclusion to leave you on is that like it's all possible um, if you really can uh, navigate and be progressive and be proactive and really just keep your head down and keep working. That's awesome. Well, yeah, I think that's, that's a great awesome. Time as well. well, yeah, I think. Um, I just really want to thank you for the time. And I know that this was like really impactful for me and will be for a lot of other students as well. So thanks. Oh, yeah, you're so welcome. And it's great to talk. And uh, yeah, I, I really do uh, also want to say if anyone wants to reach out to me, um, feel free to and I, I'd love to talk to you about opportunities or just uh, about experiences um, and ways to navigate around uh, what happens after college and maybe how to navigate through, you know, really tough times, you know, which happen, you know, to everybody. So.